Welcome to twoquestions.tv. With me today is Lisa Reagan, and we're talking about starting a snack business. Welcome to twoquestions.tv. I'm your host, Susan Barancini Mo. Joining me today is Lisa Reagan. As a mom of four children with multiple food allergies, Lisa's been cooking allergen free since 2004 a long time not wanting your kids or anybody else with food allergies to feel excluded at school, birthday parties, social events. She created these snacks, these snacks, that look and taste similar to what other people are eating, but were still delicious and free of the food allergens they had to avoid. So many years later, Safely Delicious was born. Lisa, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. I'm excited Thanks. to be here with you, thank you. Thank you for being here. I have to tell you, um, Keeping these um, for our show has been quite a task. Um, Leo and I were very intrigued when they arrived because we, we don't have food allergies, but we were so intrigued by your story and by your, the story of your kids. And so when they arrived, I was like, okay, you can taste one package. We can try one because you sent a few different options. So, so we, tried, we tried this one, we tried the minty. And he loves mint chocolate chip ice cream. And he was so excited. And he was like, can I have a big one? I'm like, no, you can't. I need this for the show. And so I had to stop him. So I had to hide them in the office to keep them from him. And, um, and as you and I were talking about before the show started, we're going to actually, viewers, this is important for you. We're going to do another crossover episode. So I'm going to get a bunch of my friends together and a bunch of local area bloggers. And we're going to taste these samples so that we could do sort of a video and tell you how they taste and what they're like and all of that because they're really tasty so lisa that's our little story about our experience with your your treats well that's, so, a, good, that's a good story <laughs> so you started this company to help your kids who have these food allergies how did you decide on what kind of snacks you were going to create and what flavors you were going to use how did you make those decisions well um the classic flavor is the one that I started with. That's that one that I dropped. That I was dropped the original. Yeah, the classic. That was the original <laughs> one. And so what I found when my kids years ago, when they were getting diagnosed with these food allergies, as they were going to like their little parties and classroom stuff, whatever, there was more and more things they couldn't eat that all their friends were eating. So in an effort to have them feel included with their friends and not feel singled out like, oh, everybody's having the cute little, you know, cupcakes and my kids eating a piece of licorice or, you know, they're trying to just find, you know, so I really- That's a bummer. <laughs> I know, so I really, really made the effort to make and create things that would look and taste similar to what their friends were eating. And so it didn't look any different. I mean, it's like, oh, they're having a cupcake. Oh, we have cupcakes too. Or, you know, they're having, you know, whatever it is, a cookie, same, you know. And those were some of the basic things. But this particular product was something that like every kid was eating that it's it's it looks like a very well-known other popular snack the difference was again my kids were allergic to the peanuts and the tree nuts and the gluten and the dairy and the soy and the egg so that other product had the dairy and it had the soy and it had the peanuts and then it also has artificial colors and flavors and preservatives all that stuff so just by the nature of making things for my kids I just didn't naturally put in any of those artificial things to begin with sure, sure. and just figured out, okay, so how can I take something all their friends were eating and make it the same? So the classic, it was, I started making that one like 12 years ago. And then a couple of years ago, I had taken, I'd made some for the kids again. And um, I have another daytime full-time job that I'm actually phasing out right now as this is taking over Yay! my life. Yay, business owner fall. dream. <laughs> and, and so I had taken my, product to work and um, I brought there in the ladies where I work they're they're known as my little church ladies I work at a church so my church lady friends had all um, tasted it and they were all like oh where did you buy this and I'm like I didn't I make it and so then they were kind of like oh you should sell you know and as I was telling them my little story just chatting as normal they were all like okay this is something you like you need there's there's a market for this and I'm like you think so literally then spent that first year trying to figure out like okay how am I going to make this a business and you know it was a vendor and I can't like within two weeks of deciding okay I'm going to do it why not um my boyfriend suggested oh you should try it in the dark why don't you try it with the dark chocolate versus the semi-sweet chocolate so that became the dark right so 
all of a sudden in two weeks, I have two products. And we go to our first like Christmas trade show or a little vendor event, Christmas uh, holiday mart thing. And I sold like 50 bags. I was like, oh, we might have something here. And so it just, I spent that first year just trying to get UPC codes, nutritional labels, mm -hmm. ingredient, you know, just do all this stuff. Because as I was selling it at these vendor local events, um, I wasn't necessarily, I could still do it in my house, in my kitchen without mm -hmm. it being commercial yet. Cause it wasn't yeah. retail yet. So as soon as it seemed like more and more people, I had a website, I still do, that has an online store and the whole thing. As all of that was picking up and more and more interest and kind of word was getting out and, you know, just through social media and stuff, it was like, okay, I got to figure out what I need to do so I can actually go into a store and sell it. So it took me yeah. a full year to finally find a commercial space that then I could rent. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and so I go there and I, and I pay hourly to rent the space for my, and it just so <clears throat> happened somebody also that I met. Uh, through another person makes an allergy, she makes allergy friendly products too. So it was just total godsend. I was like, oh my gosh, because <laughs> kitchens to rent um, would have cross contamination issues with other with allergies. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't have the money to go get my own kitchen. So that kind of started. And so as soon as that happened, it was like, okay, then it was the holiday. Oh, let's try it with mint. Let's do minted dark mint. And that, you know, it's very, it tastes kind of like the Andes chocolate. And so that, they do. Came, and I originally thought, okay, this is just going to be, it was originally called winter bites because I was just going to sell it in the winter. I had like this whole idea. We're just going to do, we're going to, we're going to seasonal flavors. Well, that didn't go over well. Cause as soon as it was known that I wasn't going to sell it past the winter, people were like, no, that's like my favorite. I like what, so I was like, okay, so now we have three. And then, um, and then earlier this year, I um, was kind of like, okay, we need more flavors. And I was getting requests for different things. So then I actually made like five different flavors one day. Did some with white chocolate and some with the dark chocolate. Some kind of mixed it all up. Had five different flavors. And then I put them in containers unmarked. I just had them numbered. And then I took them. I had friends, family. I had like probably close to 100 people trying these things and writing down like which ones were their favorites? Well, they first had to do like, okay, tell me what flavors you think they were. So then I mm -hmm. knew, was I hitting a mark or not? Or was I like way off on of what I thought it was supposed to be? <laughs> it doesn't taste like what I think it's supposed to taste like. And then people rated them. And that's what then helped me determine it's like, okay, then the next flavor we came out with was um, the raspberry one. And that, that was supposed to be spring bite, but now we, have, we call it raspberry now because that's not going to just be sold in the spring. And then we also uh, came up with the coffee one. That was like a big people love coffee, our mocha. So, um, so that's just kind of how they evolved was, you know, just people giving me. And so we have, I have a list of other flavors that people have requested Ooh. And that, you know, again, over the next six to 12 months, there'll be other new flavors that we'll start coming out with. And so this particular snack has just taken a life of its own. Yeah. And so even though I have like other allergy friendly things that I've continued to make other types of snack foods, um, I'm not scaled up yet enough to be able to start, you know, making all of them. But at some point that is my goal, like to have some of these other things that are very, you know, I look at a food that people will eat and I'm always like, okay, what can I do to make that allergy friendly? Like yeah. what's in it that I can just trade out, you know, that butter spread for something else, you know, the dairy item or that milk with something else or whatever it is. Like there's any more, which is so great. There's more and more products available where you really can go and just, almost trade out everything in a recipe yeah. to make it allergen free. So that's just, that's now, those are the, those are the glasses I look through now. That's my vision is everything I look at, what can I do to make it so my kids can eat it? That's incredible. So, so these, you are still making these yourself. Yes. Oh yes. Incredible. incredible. Yeah, I hand, okay. I, they're, they're handmade, every batch freshly handmade. And, you know, we do it all ourselves. I don't have, you know, I, I have a, a group of people that come in and help me when I really need help. Yeah. But we, you know, hand make them and weigh them, bag them, seal them, do all that kind of stuff. Oh, yep. So the next step, I suppose, would be finding a factory at some point when you're ready for that, right? Um, at some point, yes. But that's like, you know, way, way down. Because <laughs> some of the beauty with it is the... Um, 
it still has a very homemade taste, if you will. It does. It so, does. And I don't know, you know, it's, at some point, I would imagine it'll get to that point. So then the magic will be figuring out how do we still make it so it still has that taste without seeming like, you know, it's not homemade. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would imagine at some point, you know, again, my, you know, I envision that this will be a pro like, you know, you walk into a convenience store and they're hanging right there with the potato chips or you go yeah. to a ballpark and they're right there at the concessions. Like this is a product that I really believe um, is no different than the other snack foods out there. It just happens to be, it doesn't have any of the allergens that a lot of people more and more can't eat yeah. or they can buy them and put them out and everyone can eat them. And you don't have to worry. Oh wait, that one's, you know, especially with kids, like, you know, and, and kids don't know any different. They look at it and my kids take it to school and they always, everybody thinks it's the real, they think it's the other. Oh stuff. yeah. Oh, and well, so, and that was the beauty yeah. of it. That was the intention was to, you know, figure out how to do that and, and make it, you know, make it fun and tasty for everybody, not just, you know, because <laughs> I've tasted some stuff out there, maybe you have too, that it, they'll say it's allergen free and you think, oh, great. And it has like no flavor or no taste, yes. or the horrible <laughs> aftertaste or whatever. And you're just like, oh, okay, nice effort. But you know, it's still, I really, I know I'm eating allergen free, you know, yeah. so, you know, snacks are supposed to, it's a snack. People will, you know, they'll get all excited and they'll say, oh, it's free of all these things. And then, you know, right away they'll be like, oh, but there's sugar. I'm like, well, it's a snack. It's but not they, calorie free. It's, it's not sugar free. <laughs> exactly. and, it's, and it's supposed to be exactly that. It's not supposed to be any, yeah. you know, people who don't have allergies get the luxury of eating anything they want whenever they want. And yeah. so for people who have the allergies, it's nice to feel like they can have a treat too. And it doesn't yeah. have to, you know, be something that's, um, you know, that's just, you know, it's so far, Land. it does, it should yeah. feel like it's the same. I don't know how to better yeah. to say that. Like it just should yeah. feel like it's the same. We shouldn't have to feel so singled out by the fact that we can't eat certain things. So. Yeah, no. And I think that's, you know, um, when I was, uh, in high school many years ago, um, I was vegetarian and there were almost no foods out there for us there, you know, instead of hamburgers, we ate these sad bean burgers that were just they were terrible yeah. and it, they were made from actual like you could see the beans and the sprouts they were disgusting right. and so um now looking back on that the second time around in my 30s when i went vegan um i i was amazed at the products that were out there and it's right. even more now so it's similar to that 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 there were, you know, for, for vegetarians and vegans, there was almost nothing that you could eat right. that tasted good. Now, you know, you can get a little, like, you know, rib. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. You can get a burger, you know. Right, but right. This is a similar deal. And, and I have to tell you, you know, I think I, I mentioned my husband and I, we don't have food allergies, but we we tried these and they were so good. Okay. And, and I mean... You know, my husband, and I, I told you, my husband wanted more, but he can <laughs> well, have more. more. I'll send yeah. him more. I think he'll be good. He'll still have to it's ration funny. him out, but, uh, but he'll, he, I'll send you guys some more. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Well, so tell me this. How has it been being a business owner? What surprised you the most about it? What have been your biggest challenges? Um, I think everything takes a lot longer <laughs> to do <laughs> than I yes. thought it would. So, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm mentally like months ahead of where I am physically. Like I'm, you know, already like, Oh, it, I can see, you know, but it is. So I think as a business owner, that's been a huge, it, almost a learning curve for me to realize it's like, there's been some parts of this that, um, have gone quickly and as business is picking up that stuff's all going quickly but then there's like the other side of it was okay as quickly as that's going well how far out do I have to plan for packaging because if I want packaging in two weeks not possible but in my mind I'm like hey I got this great new product and can I get some packaging because I'm ready to sell it and it's like no we have to still you know this one and that one it's got to get approved and then there's this and then you get you know you get in line behind all the other packages being you know so little things like that that have just been um you know have been a little uh eye-opening um <laughs> you know that part of it I think you know same thing 
you know, getting money or, you know, for myself, you know, I've kind of waffled back and forth at deciding, you know, do I want an investor or do I just want to finance it? Or do I want to use my savings? Or am I going to get a loan? You know, again, all these are like business decisions that initially I think when you start it with some great idea, you just think, Oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, I have found, and for most people I've talked to, um, but it's like, I hear it. And then it goes in one ear and out the other, or if I, let it weigh on me too much it probably would scare me so i try not to think about certain things too much and just think of right. just that this is i'm enjoying this and and i've got a mission and i've got a focus but um it is definitely costing way more than i thought it would to do this yeah. and that's just the reality of it but i think also because it's food there's a lot more again yeah. i i'm just naturally working through it and some of it is just very natural for me already but there's still you know learning about okay at some point you know inspections and you know approvals yeah. for this and approvals for that and lot numbers and you know just you know the, the whole bulk purchase i mean there's just so much and you just and you know, and playing with numbers again that has been for me that is i have a business advisor like i had when i started having to go retail like for beginning this year i was like okay i'm gonna need somebody to kind of help me with some of this because this some of it's not my forte i'm all about the ideas the 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 marketing of it the making of it the creation like that's my brain i'm all about that stuff but to have to sit there and go okay well let's figure out the cost Ooh. Okay. And, that's okay. and I'm pretty good. I've gotten that pretty good, but now I'm going to, I'm supposed to be now this mode of, okay, let's do projections. Let's see where you're going to be in a year from now, two years, three years. I'm like, really, yeah. really? That's like, you know, so little stuff like that again has been, um, just stuff as a business owner that, you know, um, it's like, you know, it's there, but you don't really know it's there until you have to actually face it. And then you're like, still like, okay, but I'm still having more fun over here. So at some point, um, you know, I'm, I'm at some point, someone else is going to do that part of the business. Yeah. For me. Yeah. But now, you know, um, little things like that, I think, um, have been, um, you know, been definitely eye opening, but in a good way. Because it is something that I, you know, I don't come from a business background, uh, you know, in regards to, you know, I didn't go to college for a business degree. Uh, my background had been, you know, theater arts, social work, sociology. I mean, those were kind of my thing. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. And so, and, you know, always had an entrepreneurial spirit, have, you know, probably had every home-based business out there, yeah. uh, you know, from, you know, jewelry and books and, and make, you know, you name it. I think I've tried them all over the last 20 years, but, um, but this is different because this is mine. Like there isn't, I'm not, someone else isn't in charge of any of this and I'm not doing, here's the guidelines of how to do your business. Like I'm like creating as I'm going. So that's kind of fun and exciting. And I think that's why I've waffled back and forth, whether I want an investor or not, because you know, there's different types of investors and there's different, you know, can people, you know, how much control are you ready to get, you know? So there's just lots of, Lots of that stuff. Still yeah. trying to figure out what's the best fit for for my business. So, so interesting. And Thanks. Such a uh, such a great story. And that's part of what I'm doing with the show is is bringing people who have successful businesses that are growing on the show so that that our viewers can see the journey of an entrepreneur. So right. I hope you'll come back when you're in mass Absolutely. production and all the stores and I'll Absolutely. go in Whole Foods. I'll be like, Oh my gosh, it's Lisa's product. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we're headed. That's where I've got, I've got pages of places to go and people right. to meet and yeah, just exactly. Just don't have enough time. I'm already there. I just got to get more time. Too in my many day. hats. It's too many so. hats. <laughs> yeah, but it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Lisa, thank you so much for being on the show today. Well, thank you for having me and inviting me. I really enjoyed this, and it's been a pleasure meeting you. So, thank you. Thank you for your support and for uh, for offering to to. Uh, tell more people about Safely Delicious. I really appreciate it. So Absolutely. And, and really, these are, are phenomenal. So viewers, look for these. We're going to put the website for these in the show notes for today. And be on the lookout for the crossover episode on Susan B. TV, where we're going to taste test all of these products. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks.